In this video, I'm going to be going over what's new in Control X 2022 Service Pack 1. One of the main areas that we focused on for this release is visual scripting. We've added a lot of new features and enhancements, and so I've created a sample script here to show some of the new actions that have been added. What this script does is it loads a series of scans in an input folder, makes some modifications, and then spits out the result into an output folder. One of the first thing that we see here that's new is the note action. So this is a special type of action that doesn't actually do anything and isn't connected in any meaningful way. It's simply a way of adding comments to your code. Right? This makes it easier to understand for anyone looking at it. We've also overhauled what used to be called the leading parameters and what's now called the setup parameters. These are the parameters that are shown here when you try to actually run the script. So now we can customize them and change all sorts of different attributes and parameters, right? So one of the things we can do is add a custom icon. So I created a special little PNG just for this purpose. I can add that. I've also added a tooltip to help make it clear what, what this parameter does. Now when I go to run this, you can see we have a special icon there and it gives us the tooltip. We also have a new action for selecting files. So in this case, I'm using this action to get all the files that exist in the input folder. Right? In this case, there's these three STLs. I'm going to take those three STLs and I'm going to use a for loop to iterate and repeat a set of actions for each one. So in this case, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to load it into my template file. And this is my template file here and we can see another new feature that's been added both to visual scripting, but also just to control X in general, which is custom selections or selecting by geometry. So if we look at this, it allows us to create selection using either a cylinder or a box. So in this case, I've created a cylinder defined by a point at either center and a radius. And so anything inside this cylinder will be added to my selection. And so this command here triggers that selection to occur, that custom selection I've defined, and then it uses another new feature to delete that selection. So before you could only delete entire objects, now you can actually delete a specific subset of polyfaces or polyvertices. The rest of the script simply saves out th that modified file to the output directory. So if we actually play this, you can see it's going to load in the first STL, make that selection, delete the selection, save out the file, and continue on through the rest. You can see in the output folder, it's populating them as we go. And it's now complete. We've also made some more general improvements to the overall user experience and user interface for the visual scripting tool. So I've created two arbitrary expressions here to show some of these improvements. The first thing I'm going to show is that any predefined expression will now show in dark blue text. So if it, for example, the to number function, right, this converts a string to a number. It's shown in a special color to indicate that it's a special function. Same with ABS to find the absolute value compared to any user defined variable or expression, right? That's just going to show as normal text. So this makes things a little bit easier to read. We've also added word wrap. So as an action dialog is resized, the expression text will be wrapped around so that the entire expression is always visible. Another improvement to expressions is that the action will update as you type it. So for example, if I type x is equal to a plus b, as I type that in, the sockets are added. And no, at no point do I need to press enter to finalize this. Right. So as soon as I type it, the change is implemented, which is not how it was before. So this makes things a lot easier. You don't have to worry about accidentally forgetting to hit enter or anything like that can also see if I zoom out to see the rest of the script. If I right click, I can now zoom by box 
which allows me to make a box selection and it will zoom just to that. Another useful change is that you can now access the help documentation from inside the Visual Script Editor. This can be done by pressing F1 or by selecting it from the dropdown. Once it's open, you can navigate to a desired section or you can search for something in particular. Another area that we focused on for this release is the automation server. So there were a decent number of bugs fixed in this version, um, some of which were focused on, for example, stability or crashing, but we also added some new features as well. So one of these new features, which is hard to really show in this case, but it's worth noting, um, is this option on the client side, which will automatically rerun the inspection if something goes wrong and it errors out or it crashes. So it just makes it more robust. Uh, and then the other new feature is this inspection result window that is part of the server tools. So that I will be able to show here uh, using an, a relatively straightforward inspection template that I've set up um, to just do an alignment, pull a few dimensions, and spit out the report. Depending on the results of that report, this will show me whether the inspection as a whole passed or failed. So I'm going to go ahead and take some scan data and load it into my input folder. And now the automation will start to run. You can see it saved out that report and our result says OK, but it's showing in yellow. So that means that it did pass but the warning ratio that I set was triggered, so it's warning me it passed, but it was just barely passing. This one showed NG, which means no go, which means that at least one of the dimensions in my report failed. This one passed OK with green, which means none of the dimensions even triggered the warning ratio. And that last one is a no go. So. This just makes it really easy at a high level to keep track as these automations are running of which ones are passing and which ones are failing.